Year after year, the Scandinavian countries are ranking highest for top quality of life and most importantly, top happiness factor year after year. So what are they doing in their homes? What are they doing that's making them so happy? That's what I want to know. So that is what we will be discussing today. Make sure you are subscribed if you are new here. And with all that said, we are going to start with Scandinavian home habit number one, Huga your home. Huga means the feeling of coziness, contentment, and well-being. Like that is my home's mantra now. Because they have long cold winters and minimal daylight, they put in a consistent effort to bring this feeling of warmth and coziness into their home. And some ways that they do this is first, there's a big focus on lighting cozy, warm, relaxing lighting. So they tend to go for more warm toned lights and integrating things like candles and string lights, little fairy lights, and also putting pops of light in dark corners and dark spaces of the room to create that ambiance. And one specific tip I like here is to get these little mini spotlights and put them at the base of your plants or your furniture that's in the corner of the room. So you can illuminate those dark corners and you're creating the cozy ambiance. Next tip to hugify your home is to add cozy textiles and layers. And this is something I never really thought to do, but instead of just one little throw blanket, add two with different textures to it. And that creates more of a tactile, inviting quality and look to your furniture pieces and just makes your home overall look and feel a lot more cozy. Next one I was really excited to see, and that is creating a dedicated reading nook in the home. So I love reading. I don't have a dedicated reading nook, but a lot of homes in Scandinavian countries apparently do. So I was very excited to create this and I wanted to incorporate these other elements. So putting multiple textured throw blankets on this chair. This is actually Carter's retired nursing chair from years ago. Now it has a new life and I put a little spotlight behind it and made my own little dedicated cozy reading corner. And I cannot tell you how happy this makes me. Also in Scandinavian homes, they tend to arrange their furniture to facilitate community and conversation and engagement versus here in American homes. We tend to center our lives around the television. Everything is facing the television. So go into the room where your family spends the most time together and think about maybe reorienting your furniture to encourage and promote face-to-face -face conversations versus just everything directed and oriented towards the television. Scandinavian home habit number two is intentional simplicity, aka reducing clutter in the home, quality over quantity. I think a lot of times when we think of Scandinavian home styles and aesthetic, we think of really minimalist. Minimalism does not have to mean stark, cold, and empty, okay? We're doing minimalist, but also with that huga, cozy, element to it. And this to me is the perfect marriage because when there's less clutter and things are more simple in your space, I just feel more peaceful and more content naturally. But then you add in those cozy elements like we already talked about. And my challenge here is to pick the room that you and your family spend the most time and declutter, simplify that room. Just start there, make it simple and go around and look at each item in the room. What is no longer adding value to your life? What do you not even think about or notice or use anymore? And think about decluttering those items. In order to maintain this intentional simplicity, a lot of people in Scandinavian homes employ the rule of one in, one out, which I've talked about over the years. I love that this is very common over there and it's something that I try to do, but I don't always think about doing. So this can apply to your clothing items. If you get a new sweater, then donate a sweater. Another home habit that I thought was really clever in a lot of the Scandinavian countries, they're really big on utilizing hidden storage. A couple of years ago, I got these little ottomans where I could put my kids stuffed animals in because we had so many stuffed animals in the home and now it becomes a functional ottoman. And I saw that now they have something. If you really have a lot of stuffed animals, like we have at this point, they are full on stuffed animal bean bag chairs. And now it's a cute, 
comfortable little kid's lounge chair and whatever she wants, that particular stuffed animal, I can just zip it open and grab it. So I thought this was a clever little hidden storage solution. Next home habit is to embrace light, let the light in in a lot of these Nordic countries, they have long, dark winters, not as much daylight. So they're really all about embracing the natural light. One way they do this is using a lot of sheer curtains. So that way you get the privacy, but you also have that beautiful diffused light that's not too harsh and you're really maximizing the light. And not only does it just feel happier and brighter, but it also makes your home look more spacious when it's bright. Next tip is to make sure that your furniture placement is strategic and so far that it's not blocking your big windows and blocking the light. So we actually had our sofa in the living room blocking the light. So I repositioned them and it made the room look a lot brighter. Another thing you can do is strategically placed mirrors across the room, reflecting some of that natural light. So I did that in the living room with this big angled mirror and it is anchored in case you're wondering, and it's just reflecting the light from all of these windows and just brightens up the whole room. Next Scandinavian home habit is probably my favorite and that is sustainable living. There is a big emphasis on recycling, reducing waste. And if you guys don't know, I have my own home brand and that is our mission as well to create sustainable, plastic-free, reusable home items. So we're really in alignment here. One of my products is actually Swedish dishcloths. So the whole idea behind them is to replace paper towels. And I'm so glad that I've been able to influence a lot of you to switch over to those instead of paper towels. But I would say my one challenge for you to think about doing starting today is just reducing your single use items. So things like shopping bags, keep your reusable shopping bags in your car so you don't forget them when you go to the grocery store your reusable water bottles, reusable straws, food containers. I prefer the glass. And of course, your Swedish dishcloth. Next habit is to bring the outdoors in. There's a big emphasis on bringing natural elements into the home and having kind of that indoor outdoor feel. And this is something that promotes tranquility, harmony, inner peace. So I think when we think about bringing the outdoors in, we think plants, we need more green, more plants. And yes, that is definitely one option. But another way you can do this is just incorporating your home decor pieces with natural elements like wood, stone. Another thing you could do is wood tables, wood coffee tables, furniture. We even here with these chairs that I got recently, there's the wood arms. But the last habit for today is incorporating the homemade and hand crafted. And this is something I thought was really interesting because again, it's something that I don't have enough of and I would like to do more of. So not just everything so cookie cutter, but finding those unique handmade pieces. And these are pieces that you can make yourself. You can go to a pottery studio and paint your own vase and display that in your home. Or it can even be something that your kids make. And one of my favorite ways to incorporate the handmade, homemade in my house is I have these little kids art frames. This is one of my favorite home hacks. If you have kids and they do their art projects at school, they always bring them home. What do you do with them? You can turn them into art and it turns your children's art into a display piece. So we have it in our kitchen and we switch it out every week. And it also works for storage. It holds up to 25 pieces of art in there. So with all of that said, let me know what country are you tuning in from right now? And what country would you be most interested in seeing next in the series? Because I can't even tell you how much fun I have and how interesting I find these. And thank you as always so much for watching. If you've watched this far in the video, leave this emoji to let me know. I really appreciate you. And I will see you soon with a new video. Bye.